You're good so, to go, George. Thank you, Athena. Um, so pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of governance organization legislation is being conducted by remote participation. Um, it is now 10.30 in the morning and um, we are being recorded. I'm going to check quickly with uh, my colleague, uh, colleagues and also with our visitor to make sure everyone can be heard and can hear. So Mandy. Present. And Sarah. Present. And Pat. Present. And Darcy. Yeah. Okay, and Beth. Yep. And Dorothy, um, we're Here. gonna get to uh, your item for some time. So uh, please be patient. We're gonna start with Beth um, this morning. And so I'm gonna put the uh, agenda up on the screen um, just for a quick second. Hopefully you can all see that. Whoop, now you can't. Um, so we're gonna pretty much follow this order as it's on the agenda. We do not have items number six. There is no Southeast Asian Heritage Proclamation. So that will not be on our agenda. Um, and uh, items 10, we're not going to be discussing this morning. And we do not have minutes, um, or if we do, the chair has not seen them and it could possibly be that's the reason. Anyway, um, there are no minutes in your packet. So um, we're gonna start this morning. Wait, so, George, please, I also ahead. did not see an Arbor Month proclamation. I went back and I didn't see yeah, that. Um, it it uh, is actually the proclamation from last year. And we'll talk yeah, when we get to it. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk it's about- It's not what we're in the packet. Do. Yeah, it's not, okay, well. Um, we'll decide what we want to do with that when we get there. Um, okay. But um, okay. Anything else about the agenda? All right. Oh, Jen. yeah. Go ahead, George. There, there, there were minutes in the packet. I emailed you about them, but you have on the agenda. I think March thirty first minutes. Anyway, no, we're not yeah, gonna deal I think with, we're, we're on the seventeenth. Anyway, today. so my fault. So um, it's off the agenda. Let me close this then for the moment, and um, I'm going to. What I'm going to suggest is we're going to use the draft that um, I sent this to Beth, um, uh, that it should be in your packet, which is uh, uh, Mandy Joe went through this very carefully. Thank you very much, Mandy, um, both bylaws, and we're going to use that. I also went through it um, and made a few very minor changes, um, uh, but Beth has seen the one that Mandy Jo has been working on. So we're going to use that this morning and uh, just go through it and hopefully um, uh, dispatch it fairly quickly, but we'll see. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna start with the stormwater bylaw and I'm gonna open that. And um, I'm gonna try and get, there we go. Sorry, never goes quickly. Okay, so this is the stormwater bylaw and I, get, well, I think that's pretty visible. Um, my thought was to start with Beth and whether uh, she had any concerns or questions or changes to make um, based on what she's been able to see, what she's been looking at. So Beth, I'm gonna start with you. Is there anything in the stormwater bylaw, management bylaw that you um, had concerns about in terms of Mandy's changes? Um, no, in terms of the formatting, I think that's all fine. I think there was a couple spots in the um, in the definitions where she was asking about um, certain words that then weren't actually used in the document. Right. Um, and in a couple of cases, sort of a similar word is used. So I wanted to just talk with you guys if we maybe we just want to change the language a little bit there so that okay. that information that's included in the definition still gets included, but just gets worded a little bit differently. So I, I thought we could look at those a little bit, but okay, the rest fine. of it, the formatting is all, it's all great. It's all fine. Thank you okay. for doing that. Okay, that's all right. Um, so Mandy, uh, my understanding, um, and this is my ignorance, is that in these bylaws, um, any term that is officially defined um, gets capitalized, apparently, is the rule. Is that correct? That is the rule we've generally used, yeah. uh, I believe. 
um, it makes it clear. I mean, it looks weird in the middle of a sentence, but it makes it clear yeah. that you have to, that there might be a definition you're not used to for that word. Good. So what I had to do, and it was exciting, and I'm sure you did it, or something even better, was basically print out the definitions. <laughs> Keep them handy, because uh, it's uh, the word alter, for instance. Just so. Um, so I have nothing. I made very minor changes. I believe they're marked here um, when they occur, and they were just matters of capitalization on one or two places of punctuation. Um, but I'm assuming everyone's had a chance to take a look at this. And what I'm going to suggest is that we go through it section by section, not line by line, but particularly looking for any places where I've made changes um, to make sure that everyone's agreeable, or if people have any changes they wish to make, um, they should speak up in each section. Um, and also we'll obviously highlight those places where there was a question about, um, you know, the, whether the wording as, as Beth just pointed out, there are a couple of places where we might wanna make some changes. Um, so I'm gonna start, we, we're okay with the header. Um, I think everything is fine there. Uh, so this is purpose and authority. And again, what Manny has been doing here essentially is just fixing the formatting and the capitalization of the terms that are defined. Um, and I don't see anything, I'm just gonna scroll slowly, but please either ask me to stop or speak up. This, um, my eyes are fixed on the screen. Um, again, this is just capitalization. Um, So here, um, what change did I make? It's not very clear, is it? Um, so much it for- It could have been an extra space or something. Yeah, it must have been a space, yeah. Um, so much for track changes. Um, all right. So this is a small change, low impact development. That was just capitalization. Um, Mandy, I was impressed you were able to do this. It was, it's really, this is very difficult. Okay, so um, again, no problems here. Um, um, yeah, sorry, this is the- Existing lawn and Massachusetts stormwater management standards are the two definitions that yeah. I think Beth wants to talk about. Good. So, existing lawn's up higher. Up higher. Right there. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah. So yeah, Beth. I was just saying, I think I think Mandy probably just highlighted that as um, a term that, at least that's what her comment said that didn't show up anywhere in the document, um, and so we may just want to change it a little bit. I think when you go down to exemptions, there's something that refers to existing lawn. It may not use that exact term, existing lawn, but it. If we want. Mm -hmm. You want to you could go down to the exemptions and you could see where it is. And okay, so let's let's do that now then. Okay, let's go. And pardon, try not to get dizzy, folks. But um, there we exemptions. go. So I think hmm. it's number six where we say maintenance of existing landscaping gardens or lawn areas. Yeah. So it's it's there. I mean, it's not a very exciting thing. I mean, maybe we just take it out of the definitions anyway, um, or we change the definition to existing. Uh, landscaping gardens and lawns or something like that. Okay. Um, um, all right, let's go back up. Um, to the, I'm sorry, Landy, go ahead. I would just say we might not need to because landscaping and gardens, Beth, I would guess is different than the lawn definition here. And I was searching for the full term existing right. lawn. Right, right. <laughs> right. Um, I know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it's it, so I, I didn't search for just lawn or just existing. Um, so I guess I have less concern now seeing where that reference is because it's part of even though it's split up, it's it's used despite being split up. OK, so you're OK just leaving it as is. I, would be. Sort of. I don't know whether other committee members are. Do you want to capitalize uh, law just so somebody if somebody has a question because we um, probably should in number six right so that's under uh, number six and now the question is whether i can do this i can okay good job george all right all right so we're just going to keep moving along um again beth speak up if we're skipping over anything um 
Is it back to definitions? Oh yeah, yeah we're, we're actually going, up. sorry, thank you. We're back up to definitions and we just existing lawns. So um, next sec, just low impact development. Again, just changing, uh, highlighting the uh, capitalizations. I don't see anything here. There's that maybe, other definition. Yeah, I think maybe mm -hmm. yours isn't highlighted because if you're not, yeah. if you go up a little bit, the Massachusetts stormwater management standard, I think Mandy had the same kind of comment on okay, that. Thank you. All right. So what do you want to do with this, guys? Yeah. Um, so this, in, in the uh, rest of the bylaw, we, we refer to the stormwater handbook. Mm -hmm. So what I'm mm -hmm. thinking is that maybe we change this definition to be stormwater handbook that contains the Massachusetts uh, stormwater management standards. So this definition is kind of talked about, but again, it's talked about a little differently in the actual bylaw. We, we do use the word stormwater handbook later in the text. Um, so we could just change the definition to be for the store for the term stormwater handbook and that you know, means can, the latest version has may be amended from time to time of the stormwater management standards um, is that all you need to do is change this first part here yeah I would change the yeah the stuff the definition would be Massachusetts stormwater handbook it refers to the handbook later, right? Right. And the accompanying handbook. So you could have storm master storm handbook means the latest that would that make sense? Means the latest version as may be amended from time to time of the stormwater management standards of the company. Well, that's you're defining the thing by the thing. <laughs> the title means the title, right? That doesn't make sense. Well. I, right. I think it does um, ah, okay. because it's issued because it, it's a title of a document, mm -hmm. you know, and those standards issued pursuant to by so so I, you know, I think it's okay to reuse stormwater handbook in the definition. Okay, so this Maybe could stand as it is for where it's used to make sure it's always capitalized. Yeah, I think that's yeah, and I think Beth can help us find that. Um, Okay. So this would stand then. So Massachusetts Stormwater Handbook. Uh, all right. By the way, I just realized. Yeah, that's fine actually. Okay. Andy, okay, track changes are on. So, all right. Yep. All right. And it doesn't. Okay, there, I, there I am. Okay. I just want. I wanted to be the author. But, um, <laughs> all right. Enough humor. Um, Anything else here? I don't see anything. Um, uh, again, just uh, changes, changes, capitalizations. Um, uh, all right, uh, some formatting changes here. No problem with that. Um, again, I must have. I, uh, I guess I introduced the semicolon. I don't know what to leave. Must have been a space. Um, so here I just capitalized lawn. Okay. Formatting again. So number three of administration, right where you are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is where the word handbook needs capitalized. Okay. And this one says stormwater management handbook. So maybe is that how we defined it upstairs up in the definitions? Did we use I, I believe it was, handbook or management uh, handbook? I think it was, Massachusetts in there. We had Massachusetts stormwater handbook. Yeah, so, so we should probably use the same wording. Okay. Just get rid of Massachusetts. Oh, we could, would you want to just get rid of Massachusetts? I would change the definition to stormwater management handbook. Okay, yep. good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. And before we go on, do we want to then add the word Massachusetts in front of stormwater management standards in the definition? Sure. Just so here so. means the latest version as may be amended from time to time of the Massachusetts here? Yeah. Or here? 
Actually, it should be here, shouldn't it? Or both places. Maybe this is both. I would say just the first one before the actual standards. So right here. Um, yeah. Because um, and then here the first we're time we know, then when we know what state we're referring to, not that it should be obvious, but I know. And you don't want to problem. insert management here because we're calling it stormwater management handbook. You want to have it stormwater. Oh, management we probably handbook. should. Yeah. yeah. Our life is so exciting, isn't it, Beth? <laughs> hey, come on, guys. You know, this is, this is actual work. We're actually getting something done here. You know, and I just I want to give our, our newbies a, a sense of what uh, what life is really like in POL. <laughs> All right. So I'm going back to administration, and um, uh, I don't see any changes here. Again, formatting, enforcement. Again, I don't know what the hell I deleted, but it doesn't say. Probably deleted an entire paragraph for all we know. Um, uh, store management system, all right. That's just formatting, bylaw, and that is it, sports fans. Any further thoughts, concerns, questions, changes? Okay. Can I make a motion? Please, if you would. I, can you go up to the title? Yep, I will. There you go. I move to declare the stormwater management bylaw as amended at the April 7th, 2021 GOL meeting, clear, consistent, and actionable. Second, DeAngelis. All right, we have a motion that's been seconded. I don't see any further discussion, so I'm just going to proceed immediately to a vote. And I'm going to start with Darcy. Yes. And Pat. Aye. And Mandy. Aye. The chair is an aye. Sarah? Aye. All right, five zero. It's unanimous. Um, very good. Let me just make sure that it's saved. I don't let me close it. Look. Um, it, feels, it should close on its own. Okay. Stop share. Okay. Ah, second is the IDDE bylaw. I'm going to open that. Oh, come on, say the full title, George. I haven't memorized it. Um, <laughs> all right, so sorry about this. It's, I have this, okay, so share screen. There's the ID, the ad hoc. Uh, let's move this up here so we can see it. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go through it section by section. Um, again, the title. So it's the illicit discharge detection and elimination bylaw. George, can I ask a question? Go right ahead. Do, Beth, do you have any concerns about this? Because if if we're all doing okay, maybe we can just go ahead and vote on this. Um, yeah, this one I don't think had any besides a lot of the, the formatting and capitalization. Um, I didn't see anything, so. All right, okay. let me see. I thought I had one. I had one question under definitions. Um, but other than that, that was the only thing I had. Could um, we go there then? Well, let's go there and see what happens. Um, illicit connections reads. Well, I'll let you read that sentence. You know, that, that, and, and, that, and tell me if that makes sense to you. Know me? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm sorry, Beth. I, I didn't mean you personally. I meant to my colleagues. Oh. I'll read it. It's illicit connections means an illicit connection is defined as. Oh. That's not yeah. English that I'm. And no, no. in bylaws, English right, often yeah. goes out the window. So. So I think it's it would nice. be means either of the following. Yeah, okay. that simplifies it beautifully. Um, and yeah. we just so means. That's just for the moment. I'm just going to put a strike through there just so we don't lose it. Listed connection means either the following, colon, any, um, should that be capitalized? I don't think that. Andy, Andy, locate. Oh. <laughs> I don't Let it go. Any drain or conveyance, whether on the surface or subsurface, which allows the listed district. So I think the rest of this is fine. Um, uh, is it either or, though? Either, or either of the following. Or is it any of them? Is it either? I mean, the either is a little strange. Means either of the following, or is it just means any of the following? I think it's any. No, I'm going to ask Beth. Right. And, I'm so sorry? it could just then we could just go to means any drain or conveyance or approved 
well, no, permitted on, or any, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a semicolon in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could just well, go to the means, right. any, you know, I don't know. So it is either or, isn't it? It's either of the following. And then you have this long, you know, train wreck of a, of a, of a clause that pauses here or, yeah. And Beth, I'm just going to ask you: Is it that those are two very different things, and that's why it's either or, either this da da da, da or this? Yeah. Is that what it is trying to say, or it does say? Is that why it's either or? Or, or any drain? So a drain conveyance connected from a commercial industrial land use, which has not been documented. So one hand of it, it's drain or conveyance connected. The other hand is just what? Um, the top hand is, it's also a drain or conveyance. So uh, it's subsurface. What's the difference? But but one's the, one is connected to the drain system. Okay. All right. Okay. And one isn't. So, okay. Oh. Good. So it sounds like all we need to do is take out this. No, the other one is connected also. No, yeah, they both are. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Somebody help I think me. all we need to do is take out your highlighted part. And just leave it as it is. Okay, I'm gonna take <laughs> it out. So illicit connections means either the following. Yeah. All right, I'm not gonna argue about it. All right, mm -hmm. people are satisfied with that? Okay. Yeah. Again, just yeah. I think uh, just quickly, I made again. So I think that was the only thing I had that I thought I don't quite understand that sentence. But other than that, um, I think any changes I made, and there weren't many, um, just capitalization, that kind of thing. Stormwater, I capitalized stormwater. Uh, I assume that needs to be capitalized because mm -hmm. it is defined. Um, and that's, I think, it for me. Anyone else? All right, I'm willing to entertain a motion. I'll move. What? what, what? <laughs> What's the motion? <laughs> to declare um, the illicit discharge detection and elimination bylaw as amended on April 7th, 2021 at GOL, clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? second? Angelus. Thank you, Pat. So we have a motion that's been seconded. I'm going to go right to a vote. I'm going to start this time with Pat. Aye. And Darcy? Yes. And Sarah? Aye. And Mandy? Aye. And the chair is an aye. So again, it's 5 0, unanimous um, to declare this. So let's save it and let's close it. And uh, let us say thank you to Beth. Yes. And allow her thank to you, thank you. go back to her uh, her regular job. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. Have a good rest of your meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Have a rest of the day. All right. All right. We're going to go on to um, review of the charge for Districting Advisory Board DAB. Um, and again, I'm going to put something up on the screen. Um, we should. We have gotten. Um, an email from Arlene Terlizzi, which I'm going to count as basically um, public comment. Um, and I will put that up on the screen in a few minutes with some suggestions. Um, and in fact, well, let's just first of all, um, all right. Let me try the right one. Yes, I do. Okay. So I'm going to put this up on the screen. And We also got a communication, it's in the, in the uh, packet, I believe, I hope it is, from um, the council, uh, for, excuse me, from the town clerk, Sue Audet. And that's the purpose of this entry here. Um, and I think it might make sense. The entry people. where, George, I'm sorry. Uh, so where it says staff support. Gotcha. It's, you've seen that your, your chair has made this uh, line entry. Not because uh, because of that communication. So maybe, but I wanted to show it to you first. Um, and then the rest of this, we still have to determine uh, the makeup of the 
uh, uh, the body, the TBD. Otherwise, this was sent to um, uh, Lynn, and she did send it an email to uh, Sue to have it uh, sent out for legal review. I don't know for, for a fact that it was, but um, I think what I want to do now is mm -hmm. we've got this here. I'll put it back up in a minute, but I want to go to the Sue's the email uh, communication. I want us to read it and discuss it. Um, so um, bear with me for a second while I dig that up. Um, so, all right. I believe this is it. No, no, it isn't. Got everything stacked up here. It's quite a, you, you'd be impressed. It's about almost 30, no, not quite that many, about 20 files in this folder. All right. So um, this is the email. Can everyone see it? Do you need to have it in large? No, I don't see it. Don't see oh, I'm it. sorry. I got to share it, don't I? Sorry. I'll get there. Thank you. Good to see you smile, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's called Comic Relief, watching me do this. Um, let me just make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, my old eyes can't see that small. All right. All right. So, that, of course, it makes it so big, we can't read it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let me just open it a bit. Oh, oh shit. Excuse me. Sorry. We'll bleep that out later. All right, um, Lynn reached out to Sue um, with a request that, that this uh, that it's ready for state level review. Um, Sue got back. Um, she says she hasn't submitted it, um, but she had a question, and so um, and her suggestion had to do, and it's down here. Let me. I'm sorry to scroll like this, but this is this is her communication. She says, I have a question regarding the second draft of the DAB. Just notice that an IT person was left off. Now, I could not find the first draft. Um, I looked and looked. And I'm sure it's obvious, but I couldn't find it. But essentially, in the first draft, there was an entry for staff uh, support. Um, that's why I put it in our version. Um, and it was taken off, according to Sue. Um, in my opinion, having someone from IT with GIS experience is absolutely crucial to the process. I do not remember, I do remember 10 years ago when Sandra was involved, we relied heavily on uh, Mike Olkin, who was our GIS, GIS expert at the time. She then reached out apparently to program manager for the census division, and he uh, highly suggested a GIS expert as part of the board as well. And so she mentioned, so this seemed to be quite relevant to what we're dealing with. And so I want you to see it. Um, and I think we need to discuss Edit. Yeah, and if we do, we have to decide how it's going to be added. Is this um, this would go under staff support, um, or would it? So because here the suggestion is they actually be a member of the board. So we have two suggestions: staff support or member of the board. I mean, could we put them put? You know, we have a non-voting member per the charter. Um, the question is with the charter having said nine members plus the town clerk as a non-voting member ex officio, can we add yet another ex officio member? Um, or would it have to be staff support? So the, isn't the, the limit is nine, is that correct? Voting. The Voting. question is the charter, okay. the charter, yeah. if you look at the composition right. section of the charge, Right. that quotes what the charter says in terms of composition, yeah. can we add to that composition for non-voting members? Sure, that, that seems, add non-voting, how would we word it? Add under non-voting member. It would be two would be... non-voting members, town clerk and staff GIS. Yeah, so uh, staff GIS expert, I'm sorry. Yeah, personnel. Someone uh, from the IT department. Uh, with someone GIS from IT experience. who has GIS experience. Something like that, yeah. Okay, all right. So uh, I take it everyone's seen this. They see the communication uh, between Lynn and Sue. Um, if it's not in the packet, it'll be added to the packet after the meeting. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to go back to. Um, 
the charge. Okay, Let's write one. And so we have composition. Let's start with composition. One. Could you share your screen, George? So I'm we can... sorry. I'm sorry. I keep Thanks. thinking since I can see it, you can see it. That's <laughs> not the way it works. Is it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So again, how's the view? You want it any larger? I'm good. My eyes are good. Okay. Good. All right. Speak up if you have a problem seeing. Um, so under one non-voting member, this would be two non-voting yep. members? Yes. Yep. Okay, let's start with that and see what happens. But I, I, I have a question about that. Please. Go ahead. Um, what do we see is the significance between um, making the staff person a non-voting member and just being staffed to the committee? Well, I guess the first answer is that we had someone from the state uh, strongly recommend that they be made an actual member of the board. So that that's was Sue made that point in her email. So that's one reason. Um, and it also, I guess, would pretty much require that person to be present. Um, whereas I guess staff support, you'd call on them when and if you needed them. Um, whereas this sort of says, we expect this person to be present along with the town clerk whenever this committee meets. Now, maybe the, the difference is, Darcy, it turns out to be zero, you know, no real difference, but. Um, so I would add one other potential difference, um, yeah. which is our authority. Um, we can probably <laughs> under authority add members, but given how the charter is written, we might not be able to dictate who the staff support is other than town manager or designee. Um, so, so, you're, <clears throat> so you're saying that we're, we are designating who they are through this mechanism of non-voting members. Yeah. But do they count? Oh, no, but they don't count towards our nine. So I wouldn't no, say that, that would hurt. They don't have I'm, I'm, gonna, I, I'm not saying, Darcy, this is going to be a done deal, but I'm just going to put it here for us to see. Member of IT staff with GIS experience. Yeah. You'd have to change the numeral one to two, and you'd have yeah. to do it up above in the block, too. Okay. So, two non voting members, member of IT staff with GIS experience. And then I'm sorry, up, up here. Yep. Yeah. So, to. so the person with GIS experience would probably contribute um, uh, technical expertise around um, figuring out where the boundaries are and the, the, the different, they wouldn't be able to contribute as far as like where people lived, right? Because they don't know how many people are in household so they would just they would be contributing information about boundaries and stuff like that right i think that would be their main contribution everyone's going to have the same information in terms of which parcel has how many people in it that's what right. the census provides but they might be better able to navigate the actual drawing of the maps and boundaries and stuff right right yeah, I, I, can, yeah. I can see where we, we would really need to have that. Because like, but Darcy's question is a good one. I mean, uh, and maybe in the end, the difference isn't that great. But uh, if you just required under staff support that uh, the, a member of IT staff with GIS experience, and then the committee calls on them um, whenever needed um, is an alternative. It's also a question of whether, assuming we go with the uh, adding the, the non-voting member, do we even need staff support? So do we take this out and just put them on the board? Do we I have both? We could, have I that? think we could take out staff support and have them in as non-voting members. Uh -huh. I think that the reason it's like the non-voting members on the finance committee, they're bringing very specific experience to bear in the conversations with the committee. Um, but it's up to the committee to do the actual voting. I think that's kind of clear. 
the Mr. Within would be different from what it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I assume that this person was not a member of the board in any capacity, but did provide staff support. So again, I don't think that's a, a major concern, but we are in a sense setting a new precedent um, based on this suggestion from the state official uh, via Sue's email that we um, take out the staff support line. It's already been taken out anyway, and just make this person um, a non-voting member. Yeah, I guess my feeling about it is that if we had any way of making both of them staff support, that would be my preference just because as a non-voting member, um, they basically have a seat at the table. And, and they need one. Well, I'm, I'm not, they need, a, they, they need to be able to give their expertise, but not, they don't need a seat at the table in decision-making. So the charter commission deemed that the town clerk needed a seat at the table mm -hmm. by writing it in the charter. So you can't right. change the clerk's non-voting member status. Um, we could put the member of IT as staff support instead of non-voting, but. I think because boundaries are so important, right? To proving that you're you're doing something fairly. I mean, everything that I read about it yesterday was, you know, the boundaries themselves have to make uh, geographical sense as well, right? Because we don't want any salamanders or <laughs> teddy bears or so. I mean, in, in that mm. respect, I would think that they, you would want to have them have a seat at the table. I was thinking about it. I mean, uh, we yeah, don't, I I'm think sorry, Darcy, so. Darcy, go ahead. I just said, I, I don't, I, I think it's probably not worth arguing about. It's probably not going to make that much difference because whether they're staff or they're yeah. a non-voting member, they will literally be at the table, you know? Uh, <laughs> but it does send a kind of message. Um, and I, we do not know what the reasoning of the state official was. And I don't think we have the time, but we could, I guess, take the time to try and understand. Um, because I think as, as Mandy pointed out at the last meeting, towns do and cities do this very differently. I mean, some places it's done by the town clerk and that's it. Um, so maybe the state official envisioned uh, a much more uh, active role for this GIS experienced person. We just don't know. Um, so again, I'm just playing devil's advocate. It is a change from what we did 10 years ago. It's not a major change. It does seem like um, just making staff, putting in the staff support line is what um, Sue had originally suggested. Um, she didn't make an argument at all for putting them on the board. She just noted that a state official had thought it was a good idea, um, but we don't know the reasoning behind that. Um, and so I guess it comes down to giving them this kind of quasi official status to a unknown staff member with GIS experience. It does seem like a position that would be suitable simply for staff support. So I would just... Yeah. I, and I don't know where I stand on this. Um, when it's staff support, they don't have to be at the meeting. Right. Um, and so it, it doesn't mean the staff member would choose not to be at the meeting, but the voting members could say, we only want the staff support after the fact, not during the meeting, more of we'll talk mm -hmm. at the meeting and then we'll send the staff, get us a new map. Um, and so I think our thoughts should potentially think around, would we want that staff member to be at all the meetings um, or not? Um, or are we okay with the potential of the members? And I'm not saying they would do this, but they could potentially say, we don't want the staff member at the meetings because they're not a member and we'll just tell them new maps to draw based on this. Get us Mandy, that, that would seem to be their prerogative. I mean, I, we don't want to overmanage this. If, if well, well what members, I'm saying is yeah, if we right. want them at the meeting, we should keep them as non-voting members. If we want the, if, if, yeah. if we feel it necessary for them to be at all the meetings, we should keep them as non-voting members to not give the board that opportunity to not allow them to come to meetings. Well, I think the town clerk would, would make a fair amount of noise <laughs> if she found her the key staff person wasn't being invited. I, I'm th feeling right now, let's, um, this is my suggestion and we can decide quickly. Put it here, have it just one non-voting member. Um, so those are the two options. Um, 
it sounds like Manny likes the idea and I, maybe, so do we want to do a quick vote or just a show of hands? Uh, and I'll just go either way, but I would suggest let's just do staff support, leave it one member. That's what would happen 10 years ago. It meets Sue's concern. Sue's obviously wants this person there and I'm sure she's gonna make sure that they're there. Um, and uh, the other alternative is Manny's suggestion, which is, you know, we want to make sure that the, the board doesn't ignore this person's expertise. I think that's extremely unlikely, but that's that's the option. Um, so just a straw poll here. Um, uh, and he, uh, it basically comes down to Sarah and Pat. Do you have any strong feelings one way or the other? I think I'd like it to be non-voting members, but I can go either way. Uh, okay. I don't want to waste point. more time on this. There is more important stuff with this. Uh, Sarah, any thoughts one way or the other? I'm leaning towards non-voting member only because I, I almost wonder, even though they're for GIS experience, I, I'm wondering if they also need some context. So it makes sense that they would be there. That's how I'm leaning right now without looking into it further. Okay, fair enough. So Much then better I'm, than my non-reason. All right, <laughs> so then what I'm hearing is take this out. Yep. <laughs> um, there are two non-voting members. Um, and... Uh, Town clerk and member of IT staff with GIS experience. Good. Okay. Um, the next item really also involves an email. So I'm going to stop sharing this for a moment. Let's make sure it's saved. I'm sure it is, but um, let's just close this. Um, the next item is a communication from, uh, I'm going to treat this essentially as a public communication to the committee. Let me just make this a bit bigger before I show it to you. All right, good. I'm going to interrupt for one second Go ahead. just to say I may sound really cranky. Mm -hmm. I had my vaccine, second vaccine yesterday, and right oh. now I'm in a lot of muscle oh, pain, yeah. and, okay. and I'm fine, but I'm kind of, I don't know if I'm going to make it through the whole meeting, so That's I right. apologize okay. for the interruption. Okay. All right. sure. Thank you for sticking it through for yeah. As long as oh, for the exciting that. stuff, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I'm not leaving. I have some things I want to talk about on this. Okay, well, if that becomes an issue, Pat, let us know. We can I know. The, Thank we can you, the agenda. We can Thank the you. Agenda. Um, all right, so this is a communication from our Adrian Terizzi, um, uh, who is obviously speaking on as a as a citizen, not as a representative of the League of Women Voters, um, and um. She has two thoughts, one on composition and one on char. Actually, she has three thoughts, um, but the first is on composition. So why don't we, I'll read this out loud that you can follow along. Um, so I reiterate, reiterate the importance of a nine member independent body selected from our 10 Amherst precincts to reflect the diversity and demographics of those precincts and having a composition as equally distributed among the districts as possible and to be exclusive of elected officials and removed from political perceptions. Citizen involvement is Amherst culture and tradition. DAB membership by precincts is most strongly representative of communities of interest, which is in charge uh, five of our draft. Leveraging the assets of a nine member precinct based non-elective body should be a strong consideration for Amherst DAB rather than a comparison to nearby towns where it is done by their lawyer or town clerk as pointed out during the discussion last week. So one comment about composition and a strong argument uh, made by this individual um, that there be no uh, political figures on this board and that they um, uh, basically represent strongly is the adjective the writer uses um, the precincts, the 10 precincts of town. Okay, um, any thoughts? Let's start with that. Any thoughts on composition? Because um, right, right now we have two uh, political officials tech, technically. So let me start um, with Sarah, please. So in looking at this, it seems like, you know, either you do or you don't have them for the most part, at least that's sort of what I have seen. Um, my feeling, even though I know that's hotly contested whether or not having one completely independent or, or not um, may lead to the same result, but I'm leaning towards having it just um, what Adrian says that we have done and that she prefers is having it just be members of the public um, pulled 
this way. That's how I'm leaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like it, it, um, that way it seems it would just be without political mm -hmm. pull or influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mandy. So I, I have two things to point to, to make a point of. Um, and one is um, I disagree with the reliance on precincts. Um, that made sense when you elected people by precincts, but we don't now. We elect people by district, and the only reason the districts are split up is to make shorter voting lines, which is a good thing, but that doesn't mean um, we should continue to in, uh, reinforce or in, you know, sort of reinforce a precinct mentality. We should be enforcing and reinforcing the district mentality of five districts. Um, and so, you know, if, if we are to go to nine members, I would highly object to trying to spread them out among the precincts versus continuing to spread them out among the districts. We, are, we will be splitting into five, this board and what the council will vote on will split into five initially. And so that's what we need to be focusing on as my feeling is five. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So, so that's, that's the first comment I have um, and related to the makeup. The second one, um, I, I just want to, and, and I understand the concern and, and I'm, I don't know which way I will vote depending on where this committee comes down. Um, but I did wanna point out that the charter commission specifically left the possibility of having elected officials on the DAB on this board. Um, and, and I want to point out that because um, in sections 9.6 and 9.7, which are the requirements to periodically review the charter and the bylaws um, every mm -hmm. de decade, yep. the Charter Commission specifically indicated that members could not hold elective office at the time using the words, all members of the committee shall be voters not holding elective office when appointed. That language is not used in this section 7.4 relating to this advisory board. Mm -hmm. um, which just says the town council shall appoint district advisory board uh, composed of nine members from diverse geographical areas. So in some sense, it made a decision to not require elected officials, but not require no elected officials. It basically said, we're going to leave it up to the town council to decide. Um, but I wanted to point that out that um, the Charter Commission did specifically envision the possibility of putting elected officials on this board. Okay. Pat. No, go ahead with Darcy. She had her hand okay. up first. I'm sorry, Darcy, go ahead, please. Um, I guess I would just say, uh, you know, we heard from two members of the League of Women Voters, Adrian and Phyllis Lair. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they, we're both really strongly pushing from a League of Women Voters perspective that this should be a, you know, that, that the composition should be all residents. And um, I hadn't thought about it that much at the last meeting um, until uh, I think it was Pat who brought it up. Um, but I, I, I get that now that it makes sense that there not be elected officials on the on the on the uh, board. So I think that's where I would come down on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't. I you know I think that um, Adrian made a point here that um, that to the extent that uh, I mean I don't have any problems with using the precincts as as. Uh, helping to organize this because that's that's how we still vote by precinct um, and uh, so that that doesn't bother me. Uh, is that your hand, Pat? Pat. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Um, I've got several things. Um, one of the things, Mandy, uh, the Charter Commission left it open, yeah. uh, which meant that it wasn't 
particularly important. So while I have, and you know that I do, great respect for your interpretation, et cetera, you served on it, it doesn't mean that your assumption about this is accurate. And to me, leaving it open says, okay, the, the council needs to decide this. Um, and I think it's critical that there not be any elected officials on this committee. And um, Adrian says it much better than I uh, do. Um, and she talks about uh, re <laughs> removing it from political perceptions. I, am, I need to say that I am uh, really frustrated and tired of the political misperceptions that happen at our council meetings. You know, particularly Mandy Jo got raked over coals that shouldn't even have been there. And there's a consistent pattern on the behalf on the, uh, by some counselors, and I will include myself in that sometimes, to, uh, to do that. I'm offended by the fact that Mandy Jo had to defend herself by a misinterpretation by a member of this committee. I am offended that there's consistent manipulation of what gets said in a variety of places, uh, including that this is the power committee and it should be broken up. And I really, really want this to ha not have any counselors on it so that the people who decide that they wanna make a political uh, issue out of it don't have the ammunition. And I think it, it, you know, for, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not sorry about how angry I am. I once com uh, confronted Alyssa Brewer for something that she was doing that I felt like needed to um, happen. And I'm gonna do that now to every counselor who thinks that they can um, dump shit, excuse my language on other counselors. Pat, I, that I doesn't want, mean we don't criticize yeah, other I understand, counselors. but, but your, your argument here is essentially you want no I'm political, done, yeah. you don't want any- I don't want any- uh, I'd like, I'd like to keep it focused on that if we could and not get into the other stuff because- um, Yeah, I'm so, sorry. Um, it's all right. Um, Darcy, I'm sorry. Um, I want to hear from community members first. Uh, so um, I've heard from, um, Mandy, I've heard from Pat, I've heard from Sarah. Um, I think I've heard from everyone except the yep. chair. Uh, is that correct? Does anyone wish to speak before the chair uh, puts his foot in his mouth? Okay. Hey, um, I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, but Dorothy's not a member of this committee and, and we'll go to Dorothy as soon as we uh, are finished going through our own deliberations. Okay. Um, and we will go to Dorothy, I, I assure you. But um, uh, the only votes that count here um, are the five of us. And I just, I'm getting a sense of, um, and maybe it's really a question to Mandy before we go on. I'd like Mandy, if she could, to, because right now I'm leaning in the direction of no political figures. Um, so I guess I need an argument or some sense of why she thinks or might think, or one could possibly think that having people with, uh, who are currently serving, because uh, right now it's what it would have to be, have to be two council members who are currently serving on a committee to, uh, to redistrict, um, why would that be a good thing? It seems like from this, on the surface, it would be not a good thing. Mandy, do you have any thoughts on that? I don't want to put you on the I spot. I don't know but... whether I can answer that one um, because no, no. My, my thinking on this, um, in, in my past comments, I tried to say, I'm not actually sure where I stand right. now. Exactly. I, I, I did I go, I, I was there. I actually have a question. I do want to say, Pat, I absolutely agree. It's up to the town council on this one. I wanted to point out that in some sense, the Charter Commission left it up there without having a strong feeling whether counselors or elected officials should be on it or not because they didn't say, no, you can't. Um, but I, I'm, I, the question I had for the rest of the committee, we focused on the counselors, but the charge right now has two members of the um, board of registrars too. Um, are, are, are the members, uh, are my fellow GOL members um, I, I haven't heard stances on whether those should remain board of, whether we should keep those the same or whether we should move to all nine being somehow 
district chosen from wide geographical areas um, or whether we're thinking about going to seven but leaving the board of registrars on there. Um, like I said, I, I guess my initial thought was the council's the one that votes the districts in the end. Um, number one and number two, we actually have been elected as councilors to represent the town. Um, and so I think you could make an argument that um, we potentially bring special knowledge, if you want to say that, in terms of the neighborhoods and um, all that other what, what's in this charge. Um, the, the neighborhood um, common interest in neighborhoods, places where people live, congregate, recreate, worship, shop, and learn by, by that we might bring special knowledge, and I'm not saying we do, but it could be argued that we might um, to those ends due to the fact that we've had to campaign throughout town or throughout parts of town um, and potentially have learned where those um, general areas are potentially more than others in town. And I'm not saying that is actually a case. I just want to say that, but you could maybe make an argument. Um, okay. Um, uh, Pat and then Dorothy. Pat? Yeah, I, I want to, um, uh, I'm thinking about District 2, which is my district with Lynn. Uh, we cover the whole east side of Amherst. Uh, we're made up of two former precincts. Um, and the neighborhoods are extremely diverse. Um, and it seems to me that um, in many of the districts, the, the, the former precincts are different. And I, that's why for me, I like the precinct mentality. Uh, it feels more connected to the people. Um, and, and so I would like to uh, keep that. I, I'll survive if it's, it turns into districts. Um, I really, really um, believe that we need to keep off people from the council, off this committee. Um, you know, I hear what you're saying about special knowledge. You have certain knowledge of the town, but so do I as somebody who's working class or was working class, who is involved in the mobile market outside of my district. So that argument doesn't feel as strong to me as it does to you. I'm gonna to go to Dorothy next and then Darcy. Um, <clears throat> we've talked a lot about how are we gonna get uh, a more diverse council and to encourage people to run when they see how long our meetings are, how much work we have. Um, I think that the, this would be a great opportunity for uh, people, non-council members to gain experience in town and that it could be just as the town meeting in a much larger way was a place where people um, thought about town government and what their opinions were and what their role might be in it. So I, I would very strongly say, I think that town councilors should not be on it. We're all very, very strong. We are all very, very experienced. And we would, without, no matter how hard we tried, we would overwhelm other people, even if we said nothing, because it would be assumed that we might know the answer. So I just think it's be better not to have town councilors. And I see the precinct structure is still very workable. Um, there's strong feeling within it and each district is made of two precincts. And um, I think the precincts have different personalities, maybe not all of them, but certainly in our district, they have slightly different personalities, but we get together very nicely as a district. So th those are my thoughts. And I realize I'm just uh, a guest, okay. That's right, thank you, Darcy. Darcy. Yeah, I I would just like to to um, note that the the League of Women Voters was recommending that all nine be residents, and and that's what I had um, originally suggested. And so that would include um, not having the counselors and not having two from the board of registrars. Okay, Andy. I just want to talk a little bit about the precinct versus district. The precincts are for voting only. They are not, they are not how we choose our counselors anymore. They are not how we choose select um, school committee members. They're not how we choose library trustees. We choose those based on districts. The districts are what we're dividing into 
the precincts when divided may end up being more than two per district, depending on what this districting advisory committee decides and what the law requires. Um, the precinct mentality is a holdover from a different form of government. Um, we have a city form of government that divides us into districts or the equivalent in Northampton is wards. And that's where we need to be concentrating. And that's where we need to be saying those are the per, um, per the charter, the districts need to cluster centers of common interest together. When you move on to dividing into voting precincts to keep voting lines short, you're going to be thinking about a completely different type of um, division than clustering neighborhoods, um, considering where people live, congregate, recreate, or worship. You might, when you've got your district, which has to be by inhabitants, I don't know the state law, but when you have to divide that into precincts, you might actually try to divide that into the number of voters in each voting precinct instead of the number of inhabitants. So I know we have in very districts a huge number of different voters, um, and that might be something by law that you might be able to divide your precinct voting precincts into that you can't use to divide your district in uh, into and we're starting with the districts and so it's the districts that need to have the common interest and um, you know uh, Pat I think your district is one prime example um, I I don't know what you 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 said and you identified that they have some very distinct the neighborhoods in there have some very distinct ones some of which may actually have better common interest with someone in a different district right now. Um, and so maybe when you're dividing into common interests, District 2 residents may say, well, our southern part better goes with somewhere else and our northern part better goes somewhere else. And that's what we have to be mm. thinking about as we're thinking about the composition, um, things like that. Uh, I'm hearing a distinct consensus, and please correct me if I'm wrong, for not putting counselors um, on this body. Um, and that's sort of the direction I'm leaning in as well. Um, but we still have the question of, and I'm not saying that's resolved yet, but that's where I, the sense that I'm getting. We still have the issue of whether we want the registrars. And my initial sense was, and still is to some degree, that they do bring um, a degree of uh, experience and expertise with the town and with voting, et cetera and they would be a valuable addition. Um, and they're also obviously residents of Amherst. Um, and since uh, the numbers are never gonna work out beautifully, uh, nine members um, and you've got uh, 10 uh, precincts, or you've got nine members in five districts, there's no way to do that math that I'm aware of, um, no matter how you slice it. So could we have a moment or two of thought? Now, Darcy's already expressed her view that she wants it nine residents and no one from the Board of Registrars. Um, some thoughts on that, please. I agree with you, George, that uh, they bring expertise that would be valuable. So keeping the Board of Registrars people on would be a good thing. Okay. So I would disagree. I still would like it to be um, all community members. Although perhaps if we're saying that they are people that bring expertise, I would be open to putting at least one on as either staff support or a non-voting member so that they're still, you know, maybe non-voting members so that they're still there for every single meeting and they're able to bring their expertise to the board. But I still would like all residents. And I think that what Mandy Jo is saying has, has merit, right? I mean, I don't like the fact that we have districts. <laughs> you know, I, I'm still not used to it, right? But I mean, it's an old holdover and it, it's a hard sometimes to make change. And I feel like if the town has made the decision that this is what we're doing and, you know, nobody's trying to overthrow us and bring us back to town meeting, I think in some ways we need to be able to embrace that and then open ourselves up to, to um, be curious about where that brings us. So maybe what we do is that there's some way that we can really, you know, be curious about how we would put nine people on and, and really try to, in our, our own brains, really, um, we're really putting ourselves in, now we're in districts. So how would we make that possible? I think that there's a sort of a, a mental changeover that needs to be made. And I think the more that we can come at it with 
knowing that we have a natural resistance to change because all humans do, but at the same time, we're being curious about how we then are now making it equitable now that we've, we've changed. That makes sense. Um, I actually like Sarah's suggestion of potentially yeah. adding a third non-voting member, although now we're getting to a large, uh, yeah. now we're at 12 yeah. people um, and you know, 12 people at a meeting, but um, if, if, if we want them for that expertise and maybe we take it down to one instead of two at that point, I don't know how many board of registrars members there are, but I believe Sue Aldette as clerk is technically on the board of registrars too. Um, and so maybe we can reduce it to one, a, a third non-voting member as the board of registrars, make it nine, um, require that those nine members represent all five districts, something mm -hmm. like that with no more than two from any one district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried a little bit about, uh, uh, there's gonna be a time crunch um, we'll look in a moment, I hope, before we're done today, at my projected timeline for this. Um, we're envisioning that they would start meeting um, fairly soon after they are appointed, um, and they won't get the actual numbers until, what is it, the end of September, or is it the end of November? No, it's the end of September, I think. Then they have to be done by the end of November. So, And that may change because of, of factors outside of everybody's control, but... Um, there's going to be a question of just getting up to speed and then they don't have a lot of time. Um, and I'm a little concerned about having uh, basically a body composed of, of just citizens without anyone who, um, you know, on the actual body that um, has some real world knowledge of, of the electoral system and, and the districtings and the precincts and, and the registrars and the voting, et cetera. Um, I'm just really concerned about that. And so having at least one member and maybe even two, but at least one from the Board of Registrars on the actual body um, would give it some uh, you know, grounding in uh, just the, the, the realities of, of Amherst's uh, voting system, as opposed to nine people all trying to figure this out while they're also under a time constraint uh, to get this done. Um, so I'm a little reluctant to just make it staff support or make it, an, excuse me, make it a non-voting Mm. member um but because i'm just wondering and, and of course then that sort of implies that that person would then become the chair and that's not necessarily what i would be wanting but in a sense it's sort of leading in that direction is that who in this room actually knows something uh, about how this actually works and obviously the town clerk does but she's a non-voting member and so um it's going to have to be somebody amongst those nine that's going to have to be uh take the lead um i don't know i don't know i just i'm worried about nine people trying to figure this out on the fly. But George, um, there are nine just citizens before, and you know, some of them may be league yeah. voters. I mean, I think right. I understand your, your reluctance. And I think as new council members, we know what it's like to be overwhelmed. Yeah. But I think, and so I understand that, but I, you know, it's been done you know, before with nine citizens. And we have to remember that many of our citizens have served on boards right. or committees right. or council or League of Women's Voters. And I think having at least one registrar, I mean, it's kind of like, remember in the old days when we had encyclopedias? Like we have nine very intelligent people, but then on the shelf, right? On the shelf, we have the encyclopedias so that if we need to know some expertise, we have people in the room who can voice their, their expertise. And I guess that's okay. what I'm looking okay. at it, but okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but no, I agree. And then if you do put somebody on the board as a registrar, there might be the sort of the implication that then they would become the person that everyone would look to and sort of say, well, you should be the chair. And I think that that may not be good either. So what we're hearing perhaps is a suggestion, nine uh, residents, and we'll have to talk in a minute about how they'll be, uh, what we're looking for, but essentially nine residents reflective of the, of the community, and then the town clerk and a, uh, a, a staff member with GIS experience. Um, they, I can't even remember now. Did we, we make that staff support finally. I can't remember. Did we? I did. think we did. We did. Thank you. So it would just be two. So two non-voting members. One would be the town clerk, and the other suggestion would be a member of the board of registrars, non-voting. How does that sound? So nine plus two, basically. Oh, that would be nine plus three. Yes. Yeah, well, the third, the third is staff support. I, my memory, and I get it. I'll, you can tell, right? 
I no, we had them all as non-voting members. Okay, so we did put them as non-voting members. All right, so it's nine plus three. Okay, all right. How do people feel about that? So that, that you do have a board of registrar member there in a kind of support uh, uh, function along with the GIS and the town clerk. And then, but the body itself is nine citizens. Yeah, and the language that Mandy Jo suggested about, um, you know, geographically dispersed with no more than two from each mm -hmm. just make sense, right? Well, that brings us then, Darcy. Like at least one from each of the existing five districts and no more than two from any one district. It's the current language, correct? Uh, no, because we had five residents. It, the current language was one from each of the existing five right. districts. So, I mean, I'm hoping you're writing that down because we'll come back. I mean, again, the share yeah, screen I, is great. But I'm I changing can't. my copy so we can then share my screen. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm hearing consensus for that. We'll come back to it in a moment when we put the charge back up and we go through that aspect of it. But uh, uh, Ms. Terizzi has also a uh, question or a, a suggestion about the charge itself other than the composition. And here's the language that she has proposed or the ideas that she's proposed actually. Proposed districts have well-defined borders, main thoroughfares, river streams, and railroad tracks Okay, and then that a new map takes into consideration polling places and results in the fewest precinct changes for town residents. Maybe we start with the last comment first. Mandy, I think it's made clear that, that look, we're moving to a district system. And so we need to start thinking differently. Um, so I'm wondering if this second comment um, really is appropriate given what uh, the realities are now. Pat. <clears throat> It seems to me that voting still have the voting places um, are in precincts and um, and I may be wrong about this, but each district has two polling places. Is that accurate? Uh, yes. And it and though, right I don't think I, though I, I, yeah, no, right now and I, mine doesn't right yeah yeah I wasn't sure about yours because um, well I mean in the sense that there yeah there are two places but they're in the same building so maybe that's the point yeah so in, in my so, precinct right. Yeah, so basically, if we're getting rid of the word precinct, and I'm not having a problem with that, I think there was some clarity about that. Uh, it still, you wouldn't want to have one, say nothing changed and District 2 was the same as it is now, one polling place for District 2 uh, could be quite um, troublesome in terms of lines and so I'm, I'm not sure which districts have which, you know. So I would like to see the number of polling places or the polling places where they exist in neighborhoods stay there. So can I address that? Please go ahead, Mandy. It is likely that every district because of state law, if you look up to the district advisory, the, this charge, um, yeah. the third bullet point, will need to be split into two or more voting precincts because given our population and dividing into five, each district will contain more than five, 4,000 inhabitants. That's just as it is. Um, that doesn't, so we don't know how many voting precincts you, the district advising board will recommend within each of those districts. It could be two, it could be three, it could be four. Um, it, no voting precinct, my, under, my memory of state law is that no voting precinct can have more than 2,000 inhabitants, um, I think, um, which means in all likelihood there will be at least two voting precincts per district, but, but the district advisory committee could decide to have more. The, the goal of the voting precincts is to shorten lines. Um, right. And so, so we'll see. I guess I, I look at that second bullet point and I have a big problem with it, mainly because I feel like we shouldn't be drawing district lines based on where we want people to vote. <laughs> we should draw the district lines and then you know, and then split them up and then find an appropriate location for them to vote. Um, it seems backwards to me to start with, well, we can't change our polling locations, and so we have to keep everyone in the same polling location. Um, so it seems almost as if it could violate 
some of these other requirements that are written into our charter and state law if we start from the bottom and move out instead of start from the top and move down. Um, May I ask a question about uh, that? Well, I'm just saying, um, specifically to Mandy's comment, because I have Darcy's yeah, hand no, up. No, specifically and... to Mandy's comment, yeah. Okay, Darcy, just a moment then, if you could, could Sarah, go ahead, ask your question. So I can understand that reasoning. Um, I guess what it makes me think of is during the pandemic when we tried to change polling places. And so um, one of the things that all of us thought about was, is there a, a good way to be able to educate people as to where their polling places are? So I, I am ignorant of how this, except for all the, the looking into what I did yesterday, I'm just wondering if there is something as part of this charge or some responsibility somewhere where, you know, it looks like this will probably have to be done that some, you know, there might be more polling places there might be different, but I'm wondering if we could start thinking now or make it part of the charge of this committee um, to, to like immediately, as soon as those polling places are established that we start to get education out around where people would be voting. And Yeah, so I, you might be able to do it as part of the charge. I think the more appropriate since the council has to vote the final districts um, and then the polling places, I assume, would be set after the districts are districts and voting precincts are set. That as part of the vote adopting the districts and the voting precincts, the council instructs the clerk. At my my initial thing would be the council instructs the clerk to send a postcard to every register voter that says your new district is X, your new voting precinct is Y. You will vote at. Z, you know, to every single registered voter, because, you know, that, that would be my thing. I absolutely agree. We're going to need massive amounts of education. Yeah, um, and, I, yeah. I think that's true. Uh, Darcy, could you, uh, you've been waiting patiently, please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, um, I guess I fervently hope that um, this whole process doesn't have, does, isn't more complicated than it needs to be <laughs> when we already have precinct lines. Um, and even though we're not thinking of them as precincts anymore, that is where we do our voting. So, you know, I would, even though there may be changes and we may end up with, you know, two, two voting districts or three in each current district, if we, I would think that we would want to have a preference, to state a preference like the second bullet here where we don't, we don't have to mention the word precinct. We could just say that a new map um, takes into consideration existing polling places and um, results in the fewest changes for town residents, you know, because otherwise we, we did hear this during the, you know, when we were, when we had the issue around polling places in the last election, how, how much it could affect voting um, if people didn't understand where the polling places were. So um, I guess I just, I really hope that we don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Amanda? So um, I, I guess I disagree and I'm gonna mention one other thing. There are districts, um, the last a decade ago, the precinct lines had a, the the committee had a specific charge, and I objected to this at the council meeting that said students should be distributed amongst as many precincts as possible, or something like that. Um, so now we've got precincts that one could argue specifically dilutes the student population voting. Um, voting voting i don't agree with that i'll say that right now i think if that word student were replaced with other words a lot of people wouldn't agree with that language um so we've got districts we've got precincts and districts that were based upon lines that might have specifically diluted certain voting populations. And to then say, we're going to try and not change those lines as much as possible, I think is wrong. Um, you know, when you're, you, we've got, districts are larger than voting precincts. When the lines were drawn 
10 years ago, you were drawing to approximately 2,000 people of 30, uh, 10, we had 38,000, 3,800 um, people per precinct, right? Um, and so there was one census block that had more than 4,000 people in it and it needed split up on purpose. Um, you now are likely not to have any census block that is larger than 8,000 people, which is approximately what each district is going to have in it now that we're dividing by five. To say that we can't, to say we can't, to direct the district advisory board to not to change lines as little as possible when those lines already split census blocks up, I just think is wrong um, and constricts them too much, especially since we are in a new form of government and we're going from splitting the initial split of being 10 areas to an initial split of five areas. Darcy. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we not change the lines. I'm suggesting that to the extent possible, we not change polling places if possible. So uh, in other words, there are people- That relates directly to the lines because your polling place is related to the line. No, I, I understand that, but uh, yeah, so I'm just saying the few, I, I, I guess I agree with this wording that the, that the League of Women Voters put forward. Um, well, this is actually not the League of Women Voters language. This is the uh, resident's language. She's only speaking as on her own behalf. Um, she does append a document from the League of Women Voters, but that's simply FYI. It's not, she's not been uh, sent by the League of Women Voters. She does not represent them. Um, she's speaking uh, in her own voice here. Um, I guess I feel like it's, it's vague enough. So it's just, it's yeah. just promoting, um, you know, keeping the polling places that we have basically. Right, but it seems the redistricting, pur the whole purpose of redistricting is to ensure that districts have approximately the same number of people. Um, and it has to do with it, just a general principle of fairness. It's not about uh, you know, making sure that everybody is happy with where they're voting in the physical space. Um, so it, it seems like there's a the tension here between what these, this board is being assigned to do and desire to make sure that we upset as few people as possible. Um, and I'm not sure that they, they're convened their purpose or their charge is not to upset people. Um, obviously, they're not seeking to do so, but somebody's going to say, well, how come I've got to go here now? And is that what they should be worried about? I don't think so. They should be worried about making sure that the districts are approximately, you know, geographically, and in other words, what the charge asked them to do, as opposed to this, which seems to say, in addition, try to, you know, piss off as few people as possible. That's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, but that's really not what they're being asked to do. And I don't see how this uh, is going to, you know, uh, A, it's not precincts, that's the first problem. We're talking about districts now. Um, and B, it's not about where you physically vote, um, right? This, this whole process is not driven by, you know, making sure everybody's, you know, happy with where they physically go to vote. It's about making sure the districts are fair and representative. That's going to be a big enough challenge. Um, so I don't really see um, the merit of adding this. Um, they're going to have enough challenges, and this language doesn't seem to be relevant to their actual charge. Yeah, I I, I get what you're saying, and um, I'm I'm kind of behind the eight ball on this issue because I I'm not aware of uh, you know I wasn't aware of any you know plans to do a major change based on population students or whatever. Um, and I don't know what my opinion is about that. But so I'm, I'm coming from the perspective of just, you know, making things as least complicated as they need to be. So um, 
and fair, obviously. Right, right. So, uh, I'm sorry, someone's hand, Darcy's hand. Okay, so, anyone else? Um, George, there's someone in the attendees that's had their hand up. And since we recognized Councillor Pam before, it might be on, on an issue, it might be wise to recognize that person too. Uh, okay, uh, we have a time for public comment. Are you suggesting we do public comment well, I, now? I guess you already technically allowed public comment through Councillor Pam on this issue. because that's, that's true, that is correct, I have. So, um, uh, if we can um, reach, if the person who is in the audience wishes to address this particular issue, um, we will have another time later in the meeting if there is something else that you wish to speak on. But if you have a, a thought you wish to express at this point on what we've been talking about uh, for the last hour almost, um, please raise your hand. And I'm not sure I can see their hand, so hopefully someone can. Well, yeah. I mentioned it because their hand is up. Oh, their <laughs> hand is up. Okay. All right. So that, that's already been taken care of. So if uh, we could allow them to come into the room. No, and, you uh, may not. Oh, okay. It's, oh, it's you. It's me. <laughs> you may not allow me to come into the room. Dorothy has to leave. Uh, that is true. That would, that would <laughs> but you can speak, though, as part of public comment. Yeah. You can, okay. Yes. So please, if you would um, identify yourself and... Uh, where you live. And where you live. I'm Lynn Griesmer. I live at 83 Flat Hills Road in District 2. Thank um, you very much. Go ahead. I want, and um, let me just uh, in full truth tell you that my previous organization uh, supports the St Secretary of State in the redistricting process. So it's actually something I've spent some time on. Mm -hmm. I, I've enjoyed this conversation. I think you're making a great decision. Uh, but what I didn't want to do was have it come to the council and then bring up my issue. And my issue is how are you going to make sure that this committee represents diversity? And I mean BIPOC of Amherst. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that given our goals of the council that that is a critical piece and I don't know how you want to try to write that in, but I didn't want it to come to the council without having said that. Okay, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Bye. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, I want to go and put the charge back up. We obviously, we, we're facing a number of challenges, one and not the least of which is time. We do have some things we really do have to look at in terms of uh, of the uh, proclamations. Um, and so I want to leave, I was hoping to leave at least half an hour for that. Um, and we're almost at that point. Um, I don't think we're going to resolve this today, which is frustrating, but I don't, um, I think we've made good progress. And I think we can try and sum up and maybe make some changes. We've made some changes already to the document, but I don't know that we're ready to, uh, to, to finalize it. Um, and so it also raises the question of legal review because now we're making uh, potential changes to the charge itself. And so um, my understanding is it hasn't been sent out yet. And so um, I, it sounds like we can't send it out uh, since we're no longer talking just about composition. We're also talking about uh, some of the language of the charge. So um, can I, I would like to put that charge up for a moment and see if, if there are any changes we can agree to by consensus right now. And then I'm going to suggest that we're going to have to come back to this at our next meeting. Um, would you I like me to do the share? Uh, actually, that would be great. Um, Mandy, if you could put, um, so I should stop sharing. So you I think share. I just will do that for you. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Making it bigger. Don't worry. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so in red is changes from last week. Um, the three up there. There's the voting members and non-voting members. Okay. All right. Okay. And my sense was, and then people speak up if this is not correct, that, that there seems to be consensus for this um, format of composition. Um, okay, no more. And again, and um, Darcy, go ahead. Do we want to add something under um, nine residents? To, um, to require X number of BIPOC? I think I was very troubled by that, quite frankly. 
I would be very troubled. Um, that uh, yeah. um, well, I don't know. Um, I, I just think that, that you know, uh, we have our council goals. I think everyone is aware of it. Um, we will be uh, the ones doing the, uh, we certainly could put this, it could be in our um, selection criteria. Um, in other words, we are going to be, eventually, we, this committee, will do the uh, interviews and do the, uh, we won't be hopefully the only ones doing the outreach, but we will be doing the interviews and making a recommendation. So I would think that would fall under our discussion of selection criteria in relationship to the town council goals, but putting it into this document, I would be deeply troubled by that. Um, so I don't know if people see that distinction, but I do. Um, we want basically nine citizens uh, who represent uh, the town in terms of geographical space. We, when we set our selection criteria, it seems that might be the place for us to uh, articulate publicly that uh, given the town council goals, um, we're going to be looking uh, very much for, for representation from the BIPOC community. But um, that's up to the people in the community to, to uh, you know, present themselves to. Um, so we'll do outreach. And so does that make sense to people that I, I I don't think it should be here. It should be in the selection criteria that we hammer out uh, in the next month uh, before we go to uh, interviews. That's my two cents and that's off the top of my head. Um, yeah. I'd be interested to hear if other people think that that is something we could put in. It, it would be hard, I guess it would be hard to require, but um, it, you know, we could say, with a, you know, a number of BIPOC members proportional to a BIPOC population in the town or something like that. But uh, anyway, um, we could also have it in our selection criteria, but that's always mushy as we all know, you know. We, you know. See, Parsi, Darcy, it's also dependent on who, who puts themselves forward. I mean, you know, you cannot compel people to serve on this committee. And also right. it depends on the quality of the people who put themselves forward. I would be very reluctant to put somebody on, on this committee simply on the basis of their race or ethnicity um, if we didn't feel that they were qualified or they didn't feel that, that they could do the job. Um, so there are a whole host of criteria that we use. Certainly one of them seems perfectly appropriate given our council goals um, to, to, be, to, to involve outreach to and hope that we would have at least one or two members from the BIPOC community on this body. Um, but then you get into questions of proportional representation. Um, you know, and I can give you the figures if you like, according to the census. Um, and, uh, you know, roughly 70% of the population of Amherst is, is, is registered as white. Um, are we, do we really want to get into that? We want to get into the percentage of population? I think that would be, be foolish. Um, so I would suggest that we, this is, as it stands, is fine. Um, but I agree with the comment made uh, by Lynn earlier, and I think the comment that you're making as well. Uh, that this is a serious concern. And when we do our selection criteria, it's something that we can articulate in writing. And we certainly would guide us in our attempt to, uh, to in our recommendation to the council. But I don't think we can presume uh, how it's gonna turn out. I think that would be a mistake to say it must be X number or must represent this percentage. Um, I think is a terrible mistake. I think Pat had her hand up at one point. Pat, please. Thanks. Um, I basically agree with George um, in that it should be in the selection criteria. Because if for me, if we were going to add that it had to be a certain number of residents from the BIPOC community, then I would want to add a certain number of residents from varied socioeconomic groups. And so to me, let's look, and that may be something we want to do. Uh, we don't do that very well. Um, so for me, it is in the selection criteria. And then for those of us who really care about increased engagement from the BIPOC community and the socioeconomic community who, uh, who are hitting poverty levels and stuff, then we need to go out and recruit those people to apply. Um, so I, I'm going to go with George on this one. Pat, you said exactly what I was going to say. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that this isn't important and it isn't a, right, it is important, and it isn't that it isn't in a, a stated council goal, but I think in this document that that's not would not be wise. Um, 
So we're, I think for the moment we're okay with nine plus three, um, but we still have the question. Maybe we'll just have to come back to it at our next meeting. Again, time is an issue here. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm sorry, uh, Mandy, if you could just, um, do we want to, um, I think we should, we need to look at the language here briefly in yeah. terms of the chart. Adrian I, had a recommendation regarding bullet two that I haven't heard a lot of people talk on. I wonder if we, we haven't talked about it because we're all okay with sort of rejiggering bullet two for her recommendation which was to essentially add streams and major thoroughfares and I don't know, what was it? Um, railroad tracks. Railroad tracks. I'm trying to figure out why those things are important. Right. No, I, no, but, no. Well, I think she was just better wanting to define what well-defined limits or something, I don't know. I, mean, I, <laughs> I think that, that actually might be, Mandy Jo, and you might know this, but I know that I read that somewhere when I was reading about gerrymandering in, in Massachusetts, that in order to, that, that um, the, the geographical boundary lines also had to make sense. And that's one of the ways that Massachusetts came up with boundaries making sense. So maybe I could look back and see where I found that. Because I did see that wording somewhere, but I think that it's used. Um, it it might be part of the chapter fifty four um, language. Yeah, it pre it prevents gerrymandering. Can can we assume that this language of the charge is essentially the language that was used ten years ago? It basically is, other than the changing precincts to districts and adding this last fifth bullet. So I'm really reluctant to tinker with this, um, especially given, uh, well, it just, you know, this seemed to work fine. I, I don't think we suffer from, uh, I mean, it gives the guidance and they're gonna have to figure out what they mean by well-defined visible limits, but I don't think that's our job and I don't really wanna get into it. Um, this was what was the language used 10 years ago. It seems perfectly adequate. Um, and I think we, just have better things to do. And I don't see how we're gonna resolve this one way or the other. As long as it's the language is districts, not precincts, um, I think that this is sufficient. And it's gonna be the job of these nine citizens and their, their non-voting colleagues to, to hammer this out. And I don't think we should be looking over their shoulder. Railroad tracks, streams. I mean, maybe I assume the language is taken from something and I'm sure it's perfectly fine, but um, I don't wanna get into it. So but, do we? that what other well-defined visible limits include those things? I think that they're going to have to figure that out. I'm not sure I want to try and figure that out because we could spend hours deciding, you know, streams, rivers, mountains, you know, tunnels. I mean, for God's sake, um, you know, well, I how, don't many think how many railroad tracks do we have in Amherst? No, I don't think it's ridiculous, though, if it's it's part of how congress, I mean, if it's if right. it's in there as part of a, some, how we do congressional lines, if it's in there, because that's where gerrymandering comes from because there were borders that literally looked like a salamander and they stuck Jerry's name on it. I mean, I, I don't want to spend a wicked lot of time on it, but okay. can just can maybe confirm with sure. someone even counsel that this is actually part of, uh, you know, Massachusetts law and that we would consider putting it in there. It just seems like a compromise to me. Yeah. I mean, what is a federal census block boundary? And uh, it, this does not, our charge does not explain what that is. And I think- well, I think, Pat, the, that would be something that the uh, this board would, would have to deal with. I mean, I, we, why are we trying to do their work? I mean, this this language is what was used 10 years so ago. So we're telling fine. them to pay attention to these things and right. we're not saying all the things that they might need to pay attention to. Because we're gonna rely on their common sense and good judgment and-, and uh, make Right, and as opposed to ours, which is, you know, seat of the pants, uh, you know, based on some suggestion by, um, so I guess I would just like to leave this as it is, but I'm hearing that, that there's a desire to at least entertain the language that was, rep that was presented by this resident. So, so um, Mandy, if you want to add that language or- I can, uh, I, section two of chapter 54, which is referenced right above in terms of the laws, Every ward, which is the equivalent of a district, shall constitute a voting precinct by itself or shall be divided into precincts containing as nearly as may 
be an equal number of inhabitants consisting of compact and contiguous territory entirely within the ward and bounded so far as possible by the center line of known streets or ways or by other well-defined limits that constitute block boundaries recognized by the United States Bureau of the Census. So that's what's in state law. Mm -hmm. So that I assume, that I assume they would read they would read that. In other words, the part of the first meeting or second meeting would be to read that and have that language spelled out to them in detail. So why are we doing that? It's right there. Um, so I think we need to leave a certain amount of room for them to do their job. And here is the actual MGL citation, um, and they have a board registrar person present and the town clerk present. Um, so I just think, why are we doing this? Um, why are we trying to? Uh, re-engineer the wheel here. Um, that's they'll they've got it, right? But it wouldn't do any harm. What's the, what's the harm of putting it in? We, because we're going to then debate what goes in and what doesn't. So let's put, let's put the language up there. Um, you know why not mountains? Well, we don't have mountains. How about hills? Uh, you know, but how about roundabouts? But what Mandy read, George, right. was right. pretty much what is in this bullet. I didn't hear exactly. anything from the, um, what is it? Uh, blah, 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 sorry. The uh, MGL. Thank the you. I, fifth, chapter 54. I mean, that that's what it says. Uh, it says exactly what's there. So I didn't hear it say streams, rivers, and railroad tracks. So yeah, that's why I'm, and that's the language that we were looking at um, earlier as a proposed uh, addition or a change. And I'm saying, no, let's just leave this as it is. And the, there's the references for them to read and they can debate it themselves. But if people want some specific language, Sarah, for instance, was sympathetic to putting that language in, then let's get it up on the screen and let's uh, you know, decide what we wanna do with it. Um, my suggestion is leave it as it is, but we could put that language up um, and uh, tell me why you think that makes this any clearer or any better than than what the MGL above tells them and they'll go read anyway. Oh. I mean I'm trying to think of a stream that's relevant. <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering and I can't I cannot rivers? find it I mean, right what now. rivers? I mean there's no well, river in Amherst. Okay well, so I mean George let her speak. I'm sorry please. I'm yeah. so George all I'm saying is is that I understand what you're saying I'm just telling you that my recall from looking up gerrymandering yesterday and looking up how redistricting is done is that this language is actually somewhere and it actually has to do with the original gerrymandering that began in Massachusetts so uh, the only reason why I'm, I'm arguing for this I, I can't find it I'm almost even wondering if we could ask you know our town lawyer or something I I I think it's worth considering this particular thing because that's how I remember it is that this is important when it comes to gerrymandering, you know, protection laws in Massachusetts. That's the only reason, and I can't find it right now. That's right. that's my only argument, George. And my so, argument basically is that we need to get this thing going and it's in the MGL and it worked 10 years ago and we really need to get moving. So that's my argument. So what are other thoughts from colleagues? Do you want us? Do you want me to, to send this out to KP Law and have them? No, uh, I don't think so. I'd like to get. I have this a out. question. Please go ahead. In terms of, are we trying to get this out today, or is it coming back next meeting? Well, if we could agree, if we could agree that this charge, as it stands, is perfectly adequate, and we have already, it seems, agreed that the composition of the body is nine plus three then I think we are at a point where we could just say, this is, this is done. Um, otherwise, we're looking at two more weeks um, and I really don't see the, the value added here at all. But that's one vote, the one thought. So if people want to do this, then we will put it off till next, next time. And in the interim, I don't know really what to do. I, I have no desire to send this to KP Law. I, I've already suggested it go to uh, the state official, but the thought is you shouldn't really send it to her until it's ready. And so I think it's ready. I added a such as streams, rivers, or railroad tracks, which isn't a requirement. It's just a, in the way this is worded, it would be sort of a example of what well-defined limits could be. Um, 
I, I can support that change. I can support okay. what George is saying of not putting it in there at all. Um, you know, the such as is fine. And with that change, I, I would be ready for a vote on the whole charge. Sarah? Just to, well, um, could I just ask a question? Um, just because again, we're, we have two documents and I'm only looking at this one. Is there other language in that was suggested by the resident that people want to include? Or, you know, was it just streams, rivers, or railroad tracks? I mean, was for there other language? Point. I'm sorry? For that bullet point, yes. And then there was also a suggestion for another bullet point? About, that one was about keeping polling places. Yeah, I think that one, I think we've, we've eliminated because of uh, we're talking about districts here, not precincts. And I thought we felt that um, it's not about voting places. This, the charge is about something else. But so we're just, is this language adequate, sufficient to uh, uh, satisfy? people's concerns and others they offer illustrations um but it's not exhaustive could you scroll back up george uh i, I think i believe yes uh, mandy has control oh so there darcy yeah yeah i think we had agreement on the composition right yes mm -hmm. i believe we did um nine residents um at least one from each of the existing five districts and no more than two from an existing district, and then three non-voting members, town clerk, IT staff with GIS, and a member of the board of registrars. Let's hope that one of them is willing to do this. <laughs> but I guess we could just say, well, I'm If filled. not, that spot remains vacant. I'm, right, it means it's, it's non-voting anyway. Okay. So I think we're at a point where we could vote on this, but I need to hear from the rest of you. Um, are you satisfied with this? Is someone prepared to make a motion? I'm always prepared to make a motion generally. <laughs> uh, well, Mandy, please go ahead so and make I, that motion. I will move to recommend the uh, Districting Advisory Board charge as amended at the April 7th, 2021 GOL meeting. There's a second. Second, DeAngelis. We have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion on this? Because the thought is that it is ready to go out for legal review and get this uh, rolling. Um, any thoughts on that? Seeing none, I'm prepared to move to a vote. So I'm going to start this time uh, with Mandy. Aye. Sarah? Aye. Uh, Pat? Aye. Uh, Darcy? Aye. And the chair is a yes. So it is 5-0 unanimous. Um, we have um, voted to accept this charge. And um, I will send it out uh, later today and ask that it be uh, given. Actually, Mandy, you'll send it to me. and. Uh, I will then send it on. Okay. What's next on the item agenda is the actual process and timeline for recruiting. Um, and no. I'm wondering, I'm sorry. Children's Mental Health Awareness Week proclamation that Dorothy's been so patient on. Uh, yes, I understand. Um, but as I warned her. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were moving on to something else. No. Um, Not the district advisory and board thing again. Sorry. Uh, it's still DAB and it's the timeline and process. Um, and maybe the answer for that is it will be for the next meeting. Uh, it's in the packet. Um, it's just it's just sketching out uh, a process and we're not gonna make any decisions today. And I guess my main concern is that if you see that I'm missing something, there's a step not there. Don't worry about the dates so much. They're just sort of ranges and, and who knows what they'll turn out to be. But if you have a problem, if something's missing um, or if, uh, right, that's where I could use some help. Um, and then in terms of, days, dates in terms of ranges of time, as opposed to specific dates. But I think we can save that for next time. And I hope you have a chance to look at it, just to give, cast your eyes on it, okay? Um, so I was gonna move to the mental health. Yes, I thank you, Mandy, and thank you, Dorothy, for your patience. But I was going to move to the review of the Children's Mental Health Week proclamation. And I'm gonna put that up on the screen. So um, let me close something here. And let me open something. Um, all right. And let me share. And um, 
Oh boy, okay. So I'll put this up on the screen. How's that for visibility? Do you need it a little larger? All right, I'm gonna leave it there for the moment. So um, this is being sponsored by Councilors Brewer, Pam, and uh, Schwartz. Um, I want to start with a community sponsor question because just very briefly, and not that we're going to decide on this, but my feeling is that generally speaking, these kinds of things should always come from, there should be a community sponsor connected to it. Um, so this one doesn't have one at the moment. And so maybe that's no big deal. In other words, counselors, I guess, are perfectly free to offer their own proclamations and, and ask the council to uh, proclaim it. But um, I feel like just as a matter of sort of procedure and sort of just the whole purpose of proclamations is to connect the, the community's concerns with the council. Um, so what do people feel about that? Do you feel like you know, generally speaking, these sorts of things should, we need to have a, a council sponsor that's required by rules. Here we have three, fine. But shouldn't it really be coming from a community group or individual as opposed to the counselors or no? May I speak to that? Please, Sarah. So um, Alyssa and I actually um, had had a, just a coffee talk conversation about children's mental health. And then the next day this came across and we both said, wow, we were just, you know, talking about this. And it's, it's something that, you know, everybody has causes, right? And so this is something that I think both Alyssa and I, and I'm assuming Dorothy feel, you know, strongly about. Um, so we said we would do it. I reached out yesterday to um, Sybil uh, Ben Mayer, who's, who sent us this the, from, um, uh, the Parent Professional Advocacy League. I called her and I sent her an email, which I forwarded to both the other sponsors, telling her that we, you know, we we need a community sponsor and giving her the timeline that we had with GOL. Um, I have not heard back from her, so I totally agree with you with what you're saying. I don't think people can just scatter shot, you know, to different municipalities of you know a proclamation and then you know whatever we do, whatever that seems empty to me, but because I care so much about this, I I'm wondering if I could maybe just have, I, I sent something to the other two counselors who are sponsoring this saying, if I do not hear back from uh, Sybil, you know, would we want to, you know, do we, the three of us, or is there someone in the community that we know either a pediatrician or um, a psychiatrist, someone recognized in the community that we could say is, you know, does this mean something to you? Would you be willing to be <clears throat> the community sponsor? So I'm open to what other people have to say. That's just where I've gotten, that's that's the thinking behind what I've done with this and that's how far I've gotten with the work. Um, I wanna just clarify that we do not have a requirement that there be a community sponsor. I'm just raising the question um, whether we should and whether and what's our sort of, sort of philosophical question about these kinds of proclamations that come without some uh, individual or group from the community behind it. So it's, it's not, it's a question. So um, I'm gonna go to uh, Dorothy as her hand up. I'm gonna let Dorothy speak since she is one of the sponsors. Your thought about community sponsorship is a good idea in general, but I don't think it's necessary in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, when the request came out, I thought about it and I said, okay, um, a, a person who is a provider, uh, a counselor, might feel it looks self-serving to put forward this um, uh, proclamation. The ideal group is one that, if it exists, we, we don't know, haven't located yet, which would be a parent group. Um, and if such exists, it would be great to have them co-sponsoring this. Um, I think one of the reasons this is uh, uh, so important to some of us is that there's very little organized uh, work at this time uh, in reference to children's mental health. Mm -hmm. I think there will be more because as I've said at a number of meetings, I think that we had a, um, a year which will have um, impacts that will be affecting us for a long time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. although and your uh, desire in general for community sponsors and we generally have gotten them, I, I think we should go ahead with this one. 
and I know that Sarah has been working hard on doing it. Um, I think there's a little, it's a little difficult to get it. And you have, what you have are three people who are counselors, who are also uh, mothers, grandmothers, and whatever, who feel strongly on this issue um, as community people, as well as counselors. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you, Director. Um, Pat. Actually, uh, I wasn't gonna to speak to that. So if Mandy Joe is gonna to speak to uh, community sponsors, um, I would prefer her to go. Okay. Yeah. And then I, was, I have a different issue. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I don't think a community sponsor is necessary. You know, it happened to be drafted by someone that wasn't necessarily part of the community that was sort of seeking things out, but we found three sponsors on the council who feel strongly about this. Um, we've heard them say they wanna go forward. That, that follows our rules and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that satisfies it and we should go forward. Okay, Pat. Well, I want to, I'm off this topic. I wanted to go to the whereas. I'm very grateful for this proclamation uh, to the three sponsors. Um, and I just have something that I would like to uh, change a little Good. bit. So uh, as I had, I raised this initially because it's a concern I have and I wanted to hear what the rest of you thought. And clearly there's a consensus that um, the fact that there is not a community sponsor is not a barrier to this. We have no rule about that, as Mandy points out. Um, so um, I still have concerns about this, but it's for another time. Um, clearly there's a consensus here to go forward. So let us do that. Um, so we wanna go through it, uh, whereas by whereas, if we can. And Pat, it sounds like you had a particular- uh, uh, Yeah, uh, I was looking at um, the second whereas where it says 20% of children and youth. Um, uh, and so uh, number one, I thought that needed to be divided into two parts. Uh, one, whereas it being 20% of children and youth all the way to before age 14. And then the second sentence bothered me because it was not reflective of disparities that we have in um, mental health um, services, um, both to um, uh, disparities around socioeconomic and uh, racial or ethnic makeup. So I've rewritten I, I made my own whereas, and I wanted to share it with the sponsors to see what they thought. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, whereas children and youth with the most intense needs. Excuse me there. Uh, children the and youth with the most, I'm sorry. <laughs> intense needs. Go ahead. Comma, children and youth who are members of racial and ethnic minorities. Right. Or ethnic, but anyway, that's my, um, racial or or, ethnic. or children ethnic. and children and youth who are not insured are frequently under underserved in the areas of in the areas of presentation, access, quality of treatments, and outcomes of care. And so you're gonna have to not, repeat. So who are, not who are not insured are frequently underserved in the areas of presentation. Thank you. Access. All right. Quality of treatments and, and and outcomes of care. Semicolon end. And you want to strike this? Yes. Okay. But you know, it's up to the sponsors, but I feel I like- I understand, it... but we need to have it. And I apologize, I do not have track changes on because I am not Mandy. So it's amateur hour here. So after having made the changes, I now put on the track changes. Um, so comments or thoughts on this from the sponsors? Um, do we need to raise our hands? Please just speak up, Dorothy, go ahead. Um, I, I'm really grateful that Pat um, focused on that paragraph. Every time I read it over, I, I, I felt that the, the parallelism, the structure was not correct. Um, I, I don't know if you started with the first part, a, a statement that this is true, these problems are true for, for all children, uh, but this particular two subsets that she mentioned are less apt to get any care or have any coverage. Um, 
I think that's really it's actually three subsets because children with the most intense needs sometimes their their family has money but the need is um, in terms of care. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I I thought that was a, a really good clarification because the, that paragraph really did st I stumbled over it every time. And you took you took the time to really kind of work it out, so I appreciate. So that. I hear I hear one sponsor very strongly supportive of it. Um, any thoughts from the other sponsors, Sarah? I think that's um, beautiful, Pat. And I think it was well thought out, and I'm very appreciative that you took the time to do that. Thank you. Um, Darcy, I'm sorry, was that a hand? That was a thumbs up. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy. I have one other similar thing, but it's not as intensive as Pat did. Um, in the last whereas, yep. um, it similarly had that semicolon in the middle of it. <laughs> yep. And yep. so I would have just added the and and a new whereas there, put an and and then create the new whereas. And instead of putting the theme in parentheses and quotes, I would just set it out by commas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. I just want to go ahead, Pat. I just want to register the fact that I have suggested a substantive change and that at times on GOL that works. Thank you. Um, and we've now gone over into a separate page. That's all right. So I'm sorry to scroll around like this. I don't want to make you dizzy, but I do think we need to go through it just one last time. Any other additions? Would I'm Don't sorry? leave the community sponsor unless between now and when we vote, um, our counselor sponsors have found someone. Right. That's that's fine. That's fine. If they want to. If they yeah. want to. Yeah. No, I understand. That's that's what we've agreed. Um, so where is the residents of Amherst value their health and mental health and that of their families? Therefore, whoops. Okay. That's 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 a problem right away. Okay, that's why we do this. Um, we have a semicolon. We don't need a semicolon. I don't know why there's a therefore. Um, uh, we don't want a therefore. Residents of Amherst value their health and mental health and that of their families. And are proud to support. And are proud. Well, I mean, in a sense. And are proud, right. I, I wonder if, if we just, it's just the first clause and that's it. Because um, what we're calling on, I assume, at the end yeah. is um, for people to, we want to cultivate awareness for the residents of Amherst so that they will become more supportive. But it seems like you're starting out with that assumption um, that you really can't, I don't think I can make this claim. Um, I'm hoping that this will, I think one of the purposes of this, maybe the main purpose, is to increase awareness and to get people to support these sorts of things. So I would suggest deleting it. What do the sponsors think? If they want it, how do they want to word it? Because the thing seems here, this is kind of your goal, what you hope will happen is that people will, will support this. Um, so I would suggest striking it. Thoughts? I certainly don't want to therefore there. That's a very special word in this document. <laughs> Um, and it seems like you've got the cart before the horse. So I would take this out. You're just talking format and style. We state the case and then we say the, the therefore with the result at the end of the document. Is that correct? That's Joe? what I'm suggesting. So I'm going to take this out unless I hear somebody saying, no, no, this is something I want to make a separate whereas or blah, blah. Where is the risk matter? Can I just say that I think that this was. Oh, oh sorry, Pat. No, I'm, I was reading. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, 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 not at all. I didn't realize I was reading aloud. <laughs> I, I'm just was going to state that it, that the painting a picture, um, that's something that the, the person who sent this to us, so um, Parent Professional Adv Advocacy League, that that's, I think that's what they're trying to, um, 
in this, one of the big things they're trying to do is to, to sort of um, highlight something that they're doing. I also have not heard back from the sponsor. So I don't know what Dorothy, Dorothy has said she's okay with it. Um, I just wanted to bring up that, that I think it comes from the initial sponsor and I have not heard back from them. So I would be okay taking it out unless I, right, you know, right. I hear back from her. Because it just, it doesn't, we don't really know what it refers to without, uh, right. So that's this, that's this whereas down here, but I'm still up at the top. I want to make sure that before I hit the delete button, I have the agreement of the sponsors to take this sentence out. Sounds like I do. Going once. Mm -hmm. Going twice. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gone. So where is the residents of Amherst value their health and mental health and that of their families? And where is 20% of children and youth in the United States live with a mental health condition and 50% of all lifetime instances of mental illness begin before age 14? And where is children and youth with the most intense needs, children and youth who are members of racial or ethnic minorities, comma, and children and youth who are not insured, comma? No. Nope. No, nope, are free, thank you, are frequently underserved in the areas of presentation, access, quality of treatments, and outcomes of care. And whereas children and youth with mental health needs in elementary, middle, and high school are more likely to be bullied, absent, suspended, expelled, or fail to graduate. And whereas, wait, wait. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oxford commas after middle and expelled. Uh, elementary, middle, and high, middle. Thank you, middle, <clears throat> comma, what? That's not a comma, George. Uh, and high school, comma. No, no, not after no, high not, school, not, not, not expelled. Uh, okay. The next. No, thank you. Thank you. And whereas recognizing the early warning signs of mental health needs and obtaining the necessary support, comma, assistance, and treatment comma. gives children and youth comma. better opportunities to lead full and productive lives at home, in schools, and in their communities. Comma, after assistance. That's right. Yeah. Whereas the involvement and partnership of family members in the assessment and treatment of children and youth is essential to positive outcomes, and whereas our nation's future depends on the health and well being of its families and their children, and whereas Children's Mental Health Awareness Week was developed by families of children with emotional, behavioral, comma, yeah. and mental health needs to focus on the needs of their children and families and whereas, and here I take, I wanna take this out. Is that acceptable? No. Because um, it's- What did you take out? I wanna take this last whereas out? out. I'm sorry? You said this, we are, what is the this? I'm yeah. sorry, I've been highlighted this. Oh. The... This year's theme referring to Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. Okay, so the theme of children, Children's Mental Health Awareness Week is painting a picture of hope for the future. Okay. That's, I think that, it's that's fine clear. in there. I think, I'm sorry? I think it's fine. Yeah, I think no, you're I right. Do too. I think you're right, you're right, you're right. Thank you. Now, therefore be it resolved that the Emerson Council proclaims the week of May 2nd through 8th, 2021, the Children's Mental Health, Health Awareness Week to help cultivate awareness for all residents of Amherst voted this, we, I guess we'll let Athena figure that out, day of whatever, um, okay? Um, George, Please. a little stronger on that last paragraph to help cultivate awareness to some, and I don't have the exact words, but perhaps, you know, towards taking some steps. Um, maybe awareness about the extensive mental health needs of children in our community. Awareness of and of the mental health needs of children in our I mean we, we may have some chance to do something with some of the federal money that's coming in. It's it's I mean, you know, after we talk I mentioned summer school at, at the meeting yesterday. Um, I heard on the news that Charlie Baker is talking about summer school, school going straight through most of the summer. So, I mean, there, there may be money coming that could actually be helpful in this area. We might have a chance to vote some. So here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna move something just again, bear with me. Um, see if you like this.
So to help cultivate for all residents of Amherst awareness of the mental health needs of our children. How about cultivate in all residents? Thank you. And awareness oh. of. Thank you. Thoughts on that? I'm good with it. Okay. So there's the almost the entire document, not quite. All right. So I'm prepared to entertain a motion <laughs> to accept the 2021 Children's Mental Health Awareness Week proclamation as amended on April 7, 2021, as clear, consistent, and actionable. Second. Been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'm going to begin with the chair. Chair votes yes. Mandy. Aye. Pat. Aye. Uh, Darcy. Yes. Sarah. Aye. So it's 5-0. Thank you very much. Let me save this. And I will send this on to... Uh, so this is for the month of May, um, right? There's no flag or anything involved. Um, part of our new process that we're not going to be able to sign on today is whether we want to set a, uh, in, I'm supposed to communicate to the uh, council clerk how long this should be um, made available to the public. And so this is for the week of May 2 through 8. That would be okay. my assumption, correct? Yep. Up on, okay. All right. All right. We have one other, uh, we're over time. I understand that. I understand that people have to go. Um, I, am I don't have a life through. anymore. I'm sorry. Pat? I am going to go. All right, Pat, thank I'm you for sorry. being thank with you us. Folks. That's all right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Hope you feel better, Pat. Yeah. What I'd like us to do is get through the, uh, we have the Arbor Month Proclamation. I'd like us to make a decision about that. And then I do leave, we have a moment to talk for briefly about what happens to proclamations once voted on by, by GOL. And then we're done. Um, and we'll talk very briefly about what will come next. I have a suggestion for that too, which is going to be very unpopular, but I need to raise it. So uh, that's where we're headed. But hopefully within 10 minutes or less. Can people bear me bear with us there? Dorothy, you're free to go. Um, okay. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of the meeting. But I, <laughs> I can eject. Now, can I eject her? No. <laughs> Bye, Dorothy. Thank you. Um, I'll get you a big red button, George. Thank you. <laughs> I want the one where I can eject myself. Wants to, <laughs> like in the jets. Just <laughs> see me floating down into the Bay of San Francisco. Um, all right, enough nonsense. Uh, I want to put this up. So that is, I'm going to move that back and I'm going to open this document. Um, look, we, I did not hear back from anybody on the Arbor Month, okay? Um, but so I just took what we did last year and and went through just made you know and we could just send it out or we could just say look you know it's not our job to celebrate arbor month <laughs> right? so i need some guidance here uh when we don't get any kind of uh and this goes back to my earlier question you know it's like uh why are we doing this um, I love trees. I'm all for Arbor Month, but you know I got a lot of other things to do. So why why are we doing this? If the Shade Tree Commission didn't put it forward and no counselor did on their own after having done it for a number of years, I would say just let it go. And, and if somebody go. complains, we'll explain to them why and encourage them to uh, you know in the future pay attention. But it's not our job to uh, to tidy up a proclamation and send it out it doesn't even have a council sponsor. I mean, I'm willing to sponsor it, um, but I, I just, so I'm gonna keep this in the, my file for future reference, but unless I have a strong uh, objection from the rest of my colleagues, I kind of in, in Mandy's court here, um, we just how, didn't hear back from anybody. How did it come up in the first place? Uh, it was, it was right. I mean, I, we created this list of proclamations and it was on the list and um, you know, it was coming up and so I reached out to say, you know, what's what's going to happen with this? And nothing. I got nothing back. I did not reach out to the Shade Committee, Trade oh. Trade Committee, because I didn't know who that, I didn't know who sponsored it even then. I mean, as you can see, when this was done last year, the sponsor's not on here. 
I think it's Alan Snow. I, I could get a hold of him and I, I kind of feel like this is important and I absolutely adore the Shade Tree Commission. So well, we could just do this on their behalf and then I could reach out to them later and say, look guys, do you um, want you know. me to give you, I can give you that information, George, or I'm willing to do that because I know that as chair, you have a ton to do. Um, well, since I'm the one that said, oh, I love trees and I love the Shade Tree Commission, I, I'm willing to help you in any way that I can. Well, it's already April and, and this is, should go before the council at its next meeting on the consent agenda. Um, and so what we could do is in deference to Alan Snow, who's one of my favorite people in this town, um, and the Shade Tree Committee, whom I'm sure are all wonderful people. Um, we can just do it um, quickly and I can send it on to Lynn and say, please put, put this on the consent agenda. And in the meantime, um, Sarah could reach out to Alan and just let him know that this has happened and that he may also be hearing from GOL chair um, and just to improve communication in the future. Um, uh, Sarah, do you know somebody on the Shade Tree Committee itself? Alan is probably is, the- is, uh, Claire, is Claire Bertrand still on the Shade Tree? Ah, Claire. I don't know. Uh, that's good. So let, let's not cut this to the quick. Um, I think Sarah makes a good point. We've been doing this. Um, let's just do it. Um, and maybe what we do, George, is just let them know the process and say, put a reminder on your phone or something. Like we won't necessarily yeah. remind you next year, but here's our new process. Yeah, yeah, all right. Good. Can you put so, it up so we can just see it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I, keep, <laughs> I can see it. How come you guys can't see it? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Object permanence in a- Oh, I see <laughs> What a, yeah, okay. Remember, you elected me chair, okay, guys? Yes, I tried to warn you, but. None of us wanted it. I know, that's how I win all my elections. Um, all right, this is something we went out last year. It was fine. Um, you can see uh, there was some punctuation change. I mean, just basically semicolon and. Usually we bold this. I can go back and bold this later. Um, and we took this out last time and I assume we're gonna take it out again. Um, this whereas multiple events are planned because I have no idea. I assume that's not true. Uh, I just don't know. Um, so it wasn't in last year, so I'm going to take it out this year. Um, so Arbor Month in the town of Amherst, and we urge all residents to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands, trauma, and to support our town's urban forestry program. And I'm putting the date of 12 because that is when the council meets next. And this really does need to go out. Um, give you a moment to look at it one last time. If you see any typos or anything that strikes you as wrong. Sarah, do you want to be a counselor sponsor? I, I'd be glad to be a counselor sponsor. I'll sponsor. Be, Sarah, definitely, and Darcy. So, um, and again, I apologize to you all. Are we actually making it now? Our official policy to put. Yes, yeah, the counselor that, sponsors are. Right. That's and it, it should policy. actually, does it actually go in the final document or not? That's a question for our council clerk who. I think it has been, yeah. She, she may have fled. I don't blame her. Uh, I'm here. I leave it. You leave it in. Thank you. Council sponsors are, we just said, um, Darcy, come on. Uh, SWOTV, Sarah Schwartz, council sponsors. Thank you. And actually, it's not in parentheses. Not in parentheses, it? and it's left justified or whatever. It's left justified. It's not Thank centered. You much. Thank you. And you need to fix the spelling. Uh, what? I misspelled sponsors? Yes, I did. Thank <laughs> you. And That's how I spell sponsors. And anyway, Darcy needs okay. a capital M. Uh, who needs a capital M? Darcy. Darcy Dumont D and then U and then capital M. Ah, oh, I've been misspelling Darcy's name for years. Okay, thank you. Thank do you we Darcy. normally put counselors in front of that? I think we do. Thank you. All right. Oh, you have to, George, in the Please. last whereas, get rid of the and that you just struck through. No, actually delete it. So, uh, so it should be a period. Yeah, you've got the period there. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you.
I sure hope the trees appreciate this. I can't get them to vote for me. I've tried, but uh, you know. Darcy, your hands up. Darcy, please. Oh, sorry. You know what we should also say. Um, um, whereas trees can increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas. Um, oh, wait a minute. We, why don't we just add a. Um, I guess we have clean the air. Um, why don't we just add in that um, list uh, the third, whereas sequester carbon somewhere in there. So trees can replace the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen. Sequester carbon. carbon. And I'm sorry? Yeah, right there. Right. Sequester and carbon. Sequester carbon, comma. comma, and and provide habitat for wildlife. And in a windstorm, fall over and hit your house. No, I will not put that in. Okay. <laughs> and not even say sorry. Just, or vote for you. Uh, right. That's the ultimate insult. Okay. Good. Anything else? Just the you you got the bold of the now therefore. Thank you. So this this is ready for prime time, I think. Shall I make the motion? Please. To declare the Arbor Month proclamation as amended on April 7th, 2021, clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to go right to a vote. I'm going to start with the chair, who is a yes. Darcy. Oh, Darcy, your hand is up. I apologize. No. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Mandy? Aye. And Sarah? Aye. Okay, so the vote is 4-0 with one absent to accept this um, as amended, um, as clear, consistent, and actionable. Is the right. end messed up down there? Okay, uh, that's, I'm sorry, how so? Where, wait a minute, it says, oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> I think he just has to accept all the changes that were marked. Oh, okay, so. I'm just, I'm just gonna hit save and hopefully that will do it. Okay. You have to just accept the changes because you had oh. tracked changes on at one point. Oh God, I hope that didn't mess up something else earlier because I am so unused to this. So under review, what well, track changes wasn't even on. Go to, well, you did at one point. Go to accept. All right, here we. This is where it gets ugly. It, it's on and that board. It. Yep. Right, yep. And and you should have an option to accept all. Okay. Thank you. All right, and we don't need that. Oh, there you go. Don't, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Athena will fix it. Thank you, Athena. <laughs> no, no, exactly. She's just looking at, putting her head in her hands, going, "Where do we get these people?" All right. Um, good. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm going to put that. I don't know what, yeah, thank you, I don't know who that was. All right, on my list, I wanted to say something about what happens to proclamations once voted on by GOL because we have still um, Athena present. And um, if I can find it quickly, but I bet I can't. Um, just bear with me. Hi, Athena. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm gonna have to yeah. boot you in about six minutes. Okay, so maybe we're gonna have to. Um... You should take public comment in All case. Right. Let's, I, let's I do that in case. Wants to have another public comment, but you should right. do that part of the agenda. All right, so we have the public present. So um, I, the answer I assume is yes, because I can't see. Yes. So if someone wishes oh, to speak, nope. will it? No, public is left. All right, so there is no public comment. And I wanted to talk about the uh, process, but we're gonna be booted. So the only final thought I wanna have, and it's just something for you to think about, and maybe I will pull you offline, um, is I think we're gonna have to have a meeting where we just do um, uh, a bylaws. 
we're going to have to have an extra meeting at some point and sooner rather than later. And I know you're not going to like that, but I think we're just going to have to have a meeting where it's just focused on bylaws and that's it. Because we're just not getting anywhere. And people have done some work and we're making some progress. But today, obviously, we don't have time. And Pat has done some work. Mandy's done some work. Um, and so I'm, I'm not going to ask us to decide now, but I really think we have to consider um, meeting uh, uh, again, I would assume a Wednesday, just be back to back like we did this week or this, these two weeks um, where we, the only item on the agenda is bylaw review and we just work our way through it because we really do need to make some progress there. And we're finding that, that when that gets thrown in with everything else, we just don't get to it. So I don't know if anybody has any quick thoughts on that other than I, never <laughs> over I, your dead body. Uh, Darcy, please. Um, yeah, I guess I, I have some suggestions that we don't have to think about now, but about how we could save time, yeah. um, you know, on proclamations and stuff, um, that, how we might be able to get through them faster. Okay, you could send those to me perhaps um, as an email or whatever, and I can share that with everyone, but um, just process question, sure, process suggestion. Mandy, you had a thought? I, I'm never... Oh, I, I'm not generally in favor of extra meetings, but I think the bylaws that we were sent however long ago, we really should make final decisions on and get them to the council before the end of our council term. Um, so in that sense, I'm supportive of figuring it out. I guess I would say, can we wait till June um, to, to do that? Or, you know, um, simply because April's been really full this last two with this weekend and all and then yeah. Yeah. um pat goes into budget meetings maybe and maybe our budget's going to take up um, in okay. terms of finance committee and all and so maybe june might be the best time to try and add a meeting and not before that if we're trying to reduce how many meetings each of us has to go to with many other things and the thought would be this would still be on the we've still put it on the agenda for every meeting and maybe we'll actually get to it sometime before that so but okay so the thought is june you at least are open to extra meeting if necessary but june would be your preferred time is there anyone who feels that they simply do not want well maybe let you think about I'm, it i'm so. absolutely willing to meet extra and george i think i sent you an email about the yes, you did. farm and so right. if there's something i can do to help i i would be more than willing but i'm okay. definitely I can meet again about bylaws extra right. in June. Okay, so we're looking in June as the suggestion. And I, I, I hope we won't need to do that, but I'm really worried because meeting after meeting now, we just can't get to it. Um, okay, um, final thought, and then I'll let you go. Again, just sort of future business uh, coming. I think that, again, add to our workload, but I think we owe um, the council a kind of, uh, you know, the next council, a kind of reflection on, on making the job more manageable, suggestions that we might have. I mean, this is something we're gonna think about. Um, and then I think we as GOL need to just go through, and this is on the chair a large part, but I'm gonna need your help at some point, just go through all our, our processes and documents. There's seven of them that are currently on the uh, GOL um, website, uh, the town website. So uh, I guess what I'm asking you to give some thought to is what, if any obligation you think we have as a committee to the next council from the point of view of what we can suggest about making this job more manageable and some of the challenges of it. And then separately but connected is we as a GOL committee just going through and making sure we're happy with everything that we've created over the last basically uh, two and a half years or going on three years. Um, so that's something I'm looking for in the summer. Um, heading toward the fall. Um, but I think it's something that we need to, to be in the back of our minds, think about whether we want to do this. I think we should, but um, part of it's the chair's job. He will spend some time going through a lot of this and prepare it for you. But this kind of message to the next council and suggestions is something we should think hard about. Uh, because I think we all are aware that many people are reluctant to take this job because it seems to be just too much. And we need to think hard about how we can address that. And that's I think falls within our our, our, our business as GOL. Um, I don't have any brilliant ideas at the moment. Um, I'm hoping you will all have some, but I think we do owe something like that to the council that's coming after us. Or just say, 
this is an impossible job. So if you sign up for it, be ready. I don't like that, but so I have nothing more. Any other thoughts, future agenda items? People, uh, I'm going to be speaking with Darcy later this week. We're going to talk about the situation with rule of procedure 10.10 .10 and where uh, that goes next, um, just to let you know. Um, and I'll just be speaking to her alone, um, but uh, that's coming up. Anything else on the agenda for next time? Thank you all. Um, thank you, Athena, as always. Thank you, Emily. And uh, see you all this weekend. <laughs>